In this video, I'll show you how to use the Agresti Cole method to compute a confidence interval for proportions. Here's an example. A news agency asks 10 random voters if they support measure A. So you could replace this with anything. If they want to vote for candidate B, yes or no, on measure A, any of these, any of these things where you have a binary income outcome, you can model like this. Co doing the confidence interval is not the hard part. The hard part is finding a, a sample of 10 random voters or an arbitrary number of voters, but that's a, a different problem for a different class, maybe. Now we get it in the language of random variables. Let x be the number of voters that support measure A. So x is distributed as binomial n, which is equal to 10 in this case. We have a sample of 10 and our number of voters, p. p is unknown. We want to estimate it and get a confidence interval for it. So applying the agresti cole method, we take n tilde is equal to n plus 4, equal to 10 plus 4, which is equal to 14. We take p tilde is equal to p, uh, rather... p tilde is equal to x plus 2 divided by n tilde, which is equal to, so suppose, we observe x equals 7, 7 out of 10 support it, okay? So then we go 7 plus 2 over n tilde over 14, which is 9 over 14. Now to find a 95% confidence interval for p, because it's a 95% confidence interval, we have alpha equals 0 0.05. So z alpha over 2 is equal to 1.96. And the confidence interval is given by p tilde plus or minus z alpha over 2 times the square root of this variance, p tilde, 1 minus p tilde over n tilde. Plugging in all our numbers here, we have 9 over 14 plus or minus 1.96. Well, z alpha over 2 is actually negative 1.96. So we take plus or minus square root of 9 over 14. 1 minus 9 over 14 divided by 14. We plug all this into our calculator, we get the numbers 0 0.39. and 0 0.89. So here is our, this is our 95% confidence interval, which is fairly wide because our sample size is so low. We need to get more samples in order to get a more precise estimate here. So if we, instead of observing seven, if instead we observed nine, 
then our numbers would be different. We would get here 11 over 14 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 9. So if you instead observe x over 9, we plug it in, we would get this formula, 11 over 14 plus or minus all this. So this is equal to the interval 0 0.57, and the upper bound is 1.000656. Okay, so this here, because this is greater than 1, we just replace with 1. And we would do the same thing if it was on the low end, replacing it with 0. Replacing it with 1, we get the interval 0 0.57 comma 1. That's our uh, confidence interval. Now I'll show you how to do a sample size calculation. Here's an example of what the question looks like for it. That's how many voters do you need to sample so that the width of a 95% confidence interval is plus or minus 0 0.01. So you're asking a, a different question. How many people do you need to survey before you can get a really tight confidence interval for the proportion? So the answer lies in, because it's 95%, we have alpha equals... 0 0.05 and this alpha so z alpha over 2 is equal to 1.96 approximately from the normal distribution so then we have this formula we want one point negative one point nine six we want one point nine six times the square root of p tilde times one minus p tilde so then you do something like the following you have this 1.96, which is comes from the z alpha over 2. Times this equation that measures the spread of the confidence interval. You want this to be equal to 0 0.01. So if x equals 7, as we had in the previous example, if x equals 7, p tilde equals so we showed above that if x equals 7 p tilde equals 9 over 14 so we plug that in for p tilde and n tilde is equal to n plus 4 plugging all these in we have 1.96 times p tilde, 1 minus p tilde, or n plus 4 is equal to 0 0.01. So what we really want is this equation. We want the width of this interval to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. So now I'm going to do the algebra, just write it all down. If you have questions about this, we can talk about it in office hours, but I'm not gonna explain it right here. So you finally get to an expression like this one on the right-hand side. Now you can plug in your actual values of p tilde. So we have nine over 14 for p tilde, one minus nine over 14. over 0 0.01 over 1.96 squared 
minus 4 is less than or equal to n. So you plug all this in, you get 8,816 is less than or equal to n. So you have to survey at least 8,816 people in order to get a confidence interval that's that small for p, which is kind of surprising.